kids, thanks so much for joining me by my, for my fan requested preview of the 2019 Texas Tech Red Raiders. Before you go any farther, no, I normally would not do a preview for them. As I said, it was a watch or a viewer requested preview. But I'm Bobby Darkins. Hit, uh, hit, hit the subscribe button turn on notifications. When I think about the Texas Tech Red Raiders, I have to be honest with you, it, it goes back a little bit in time for me. For my younger viewers who may just be teenagers or maybe just in high school, Texas Tech, aside from Patrick Mahomes playing for them a couple of years ago, would be somewhat relevant. For a couple of years there, they had a really good football team. You had the swag and the arrogance and pure T out of, I'm right, you're wrong, no matter what, Mike Leach. Mike Leach, he, he, he actually went to law school, I understand, became a lawyer, so he's going to coach football. So when you got that attitude from Mike, it was the lawyer in him. He knows everything. How about that 2008 last-second catch by Michael Cra uh, Crabtree there on the sideline? Side I can't talk today. I don't know what's wrong with me. Maybe I had a stroke. Maybe I did. Call some help. Uh, against Texas. Ran in for a touchdown. Voted one of the most memorable plays in recent college football. I think about Cliff Kingsbury. Though he just got fired, and then he ended up, what, a coordinator for the 49ers, and then a few, a few weeks later, he becomes a head coach of an NFL team. Yes, he got fired from being a college football coach at a, no offense, mediocre college football team and now he's running the thing over in Arizona. It tells you what a good haircut and some confidence will do for you. But I think about Cliff Kingsbury. As much as I don't want to admit it, that guy helped lead to a 55-14 to 14 victory over Clemson back, what, 2003, 2004, somewhere in there? Graham Harrell, B.J. Sims, how could I forget Wes Welker? But unfortunately for Texas Tech in the past years, they've had to share the limelight with, I don't know, Texas, you know, a little old team named Oklahoma, the sporadic greatness of TCU. There was those few years that Baylor looked unstoppable. Pre-scan Things haven't always been looking up for Texas Tech. I mean, I'm being honest. I mean, I, I'm not, listen, I'm not talking trash. Maybe I am. But the truth is, Texas Tech has really, really had a difficult, difficult, uh, um, um, hand of cards dealt to them. So let's talk about this season. They do have a brand new coach, Matt Wells. I think you come from Utah State. Do some really good things, Utah State. Let me tell you right now. There's some of these guys, they go and they win at these colleges, these universities, you're sitting there going, yeah, because that school has tradition. He did it at Utah State. Freaking Utah State. Somebody should make a sculpture out of that man and, I don't know, bronze it or something over there out there in Utah State. In all honesty, this guy is a really, really good coach. Got him into the top 25. Utah State became one of those teams who would come in and play it, and you went, um, how did they just beat us? They're Utah State. Ask the guy who's taking over here. Now listen, it's not going to be a microwave fix for this one. Might as well get ready for crock pot results, okay? I know you want it fixed overnight. I do think that he's a good enough coach to where he can actually get you, get you a little higher up, maybe. And you're not going to finish in the top three or top four. Maybe Fourth, at best. You're not going to get in that top three position. I know exactly who's in, in front. You got Oklahoma, maybe Texas, according if I get some stuff worked out. I mean, right off the bat, there's, there's some problems for you. Give or take a year, TCU. I mean, it, it is what it is. So don't be too hard on this man. Do I think he's going to go out and have maybe a losing record this year? I think he's going to top 500, and I think he'll get you to the, your first bowl game uh, in a couple of years, and he'll start having you looking more and more competitive. He's, he's, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. 
So uh, let's talk about who he has coming back. Uh, you do have seven of the eleven coming back. I always think that's cool. Seven eleven. I want to slash you. Uh, seven of the eleven coming back on the offensive side of the ball. I think he has like uh, three starters uh, coming back on the uh, uh, offensive line. Had to look down there for a second at my notes. Uh, the truth is, when you're trying to build a team, you're trying to build any team, you're trying to be relevant, you have to have a solid offensive line. Even some teams, no matter how good their offensive line is, they still find a way to lose it. That goes back to the quarterback, that goes back to offensive coordinating and some of the some of the development on the team. That's just the truth. Don't get mad at me. That's just like it is a scientific proven fact that if you get two ugly people together and they procreate, 97.4% of the time, the baby's going to be ugly as piss. That ain't my fault. Ain't the Lord's fault. So it's two ugly people's fault. So we have to think about that. Uh, you do have this young and did pretty well for you last year. Alan Bowman, about 2,700 yards, 17 touchdowns. You had another guy behind him who, who over 1,000 yards passed, and there were some injuries here and there with Bowman. They feel really, really comfortable with him. Uh, he's got some uh, pretty solid receivers coming back, but your two top wide receivers, they're gone. They're gone. They're gone. So Wesley and High, they're long gone. Uh, but uh, you do have some. You do have some people you do believe in on the, on on the uh, coming back wide receiving, uh, rushing. Uh, as you would imagine, with Texas Tech, Texas Tech. I mean, their top rusher didn't even break 400 yards. Okay, but there was a couple of rushers. Uh, I said rushers, not Russians. No collusion here. Uh, yeah. Three of them, in fact, that's almost th around 350 yards apiece. If you do the math and carry one pinky toe, that's a little over 1,000 yards. Okay? So, it's not barren land. In fact, with them throwing the ball so much, it probably opens up the running game a little more than what me, who doesn't watch most of their games, uh, can do. I got a uh, real quick. This is a live stream. See, Big Eddie's on here. Man, Big Eddie. Carson's on here. Man, Bruce Hux. Man, I'm not calling Fine Bomb. I get banned from everything if I called Fine Bomb. Big Eddie's on here. Ain't good at math, but the Lord loves him anyway. Let's jump into your schedule. Uh, your defense, I ain't even really want to talk about your defense. You only get six out of the 11 back. It's okay. Uh, but you lost some. You, you get you get two of your top three tacklers back. But after that, it's kind of, eh. Just roll with that. Uh, very first game, you're going to play against Montana State. Montana State gives you a chance to not blow it if it you're trying to build some. I always say this, and I'm going to stop here, and I promise I'll jump right to schedule and stop just throwing around every little thing I think, chasing, you know, butterflies and such. The day that Clemson, and I, I do use Clemson a lot. Somebody said that the other day. You talked about Clemson a lot. No crap, Sherlock! I've been pulling for them for years. I had to sit there and watch them be horrible for years. And now they've won two out of the past three national championships, and they are the bar, the standard, of course I'm going to talk about them. But I'm going to tell you how things got fixed in Clemson. Because you got to remember, and I'm not knocking anybody, remember I try not to knock people. Other than that ugly baby. Between those ugly people. Um, Tommy Bowden would, would one week, he, he, he would beat Miami down in Cor uh, Coral Gables, that's when they were still playing in Coral Gables, and the very next week he lost to Duke up in Durham. How the piss do you do that? Hmm? How? How do you do that? I don't know. But if you want to be able to rebuild a team, you have to win the games you're supposed to win. Don't go in there and flounder in them. Don't go in there and play around and maybe get a little upset. I don't care what Bobby Dodd said. Bobby, I under, the, the idea behind Bobby Dodd is that the games have to be played on the field. It does not mean that you take Doo Doo State and play them against Alabama or Georgia or obviously Clemson, and there's just this great chance they're going to win. Most likely, Doo Doo State is going down, and they're going down the toilet. Pun intended. 
You have to win the games you're supposed to win. And then the toss-up games, you're supposed to really fight and win some of the toss-up games. And if you lose, you don't get blown out. And then the games that everybody's going, there's no way in a very hot place with even the flames of hell tickling your feet that they're going to win this game. They're going to get blown out. But you actually play very competitive. You may lose, but it's like, holy crap, these guys are really coming back. That's how you rebuild a team. That's what Sweeney did at Clemson. That's why they're where they are at. Overall, that's how he did it. That's what you're going to have to do here at Texas Tech. To me, the majority of the Big 12 for you is still wide open. Wide open. We have Texas who's not completely back, though people are screaming, they're back, baby. That's just people trying to get ratings on big networks. I get it. It's a business. Uh, Oklahoma, they're Oklahoma. But I'm telling you, other than that, it's, op it, it, it's, it's open for the taking. All right? So, so first game, Montana State, I believe you win that game. Very next week, you play UTEP. Uh, UTEP, mid-game, might, they might run a little closer with you than what you think. I just don't. I, I think overall, you've got a well-coached, even though he's new, he's going to coach, he's, go, he's going to bring your players and their mind into the right place. I think you win that game. You're two and zero. That's a good thing. Two and zero. Last year you're five and seven, so you're almost half of what you did last year. Next game you're playing at Arizona. Arizona for people like myself who comes on here, we don't hide behind these cute little names and type on our keyboards, insults and everything. We put our face out here. We we do what we do. We tell what we believe, and I sleep just fine, confidently at night, with two pillows, a comforter, and my beautiful wife laying beside me with the office playing in the in the background. But, teams like Auburn, very difficult to predict. Because when, y'all there? Are y'all there? Something just happened. Somebody just tried to call me. No. Uh, this is a live stream. Anything goes. Uh, but. Arizona's one of those teams. They're, they're the Auburn of the Pac-12. You never know how they're going to play. I believe they beat you. It's at Tucson. It'd be a great game for you to win. It's almost a toss-up, but I believe they beat you. You're off the very next week. You're going to need it. Coming off of a loss, first loss of the season. Slight chance you could win it, but I believe you're going to lose it. You're 2-1. and one. People are celebrating. Very next week, you're at Oklahoma. At Oklahoma. Uh, look, I'm not going to just beat around the bush. Uh, this would be a great game for you to show up and try and bust your butt, try to keep it close. I don't know if right now uh, Matt Wells has the players to keep it really close, uh, but I believe he's a good enough coach to possibly keep it close. I believe you lose to Oklahoma at this point. You're 2-2. Two two. Very next week, you play Oklahoma State. Uh, they're in your back door. Uh, I'll tell you right now, Oklahoma State... Um, I believe Oklahoma State is a team that is now, it's not just stalled. I believe, I believe somebody needs to clean out the carburetor or else the, end, or else the whole thing ain't going to crank up again. All right? Uh, that's where I'm at. Uh, you got to think that, uh, um, oh, watch his face with the beaver on his head. Uh, Gundy, I mean, he's done what he's can do, do. I mean, he's been there for flipping ever. Uh, He's had some good stuff, but uh, at the end of the day, yeah. I believe they beat you. With that said, I believe they beat you. I believe you, unfortunately, lose this game. This is a major toss-up game that if you could catch the win, you definitely could do well. You could beat them because I don't think there's that much difference between you. He's been there for a long time. So he has tenure, and you're, you have a brand-new coach. I just don't see too much of a difference there overall. I, I think that, that the morale is down there, Oklahoma State. I, I don't I don't believe that people was believing like it was just called like two or three years ago. They were they were running the top ten and now they look like they're barely in the top fifty, top forty. I believe they still beat you. At Baylor. You're either going to sulk 
and lose this game, or you're going to come out fighting and you're going to win this game. I believe you pull it off against Baylor. Very close game. You're going to have a lot to prove. You're going to be licking your wounds. The, the, I, that's just what I think. Uh, I, I think that you're, you're coming off of three straight losses. You're two and three at this point. I believe that you beat Baylor. And now you're three and three. So start to feel better. You don't have a losing, not a winning record. You're just at 500. That's way better than where you finished last year. Iowa State, Matt Campbell was a good football coach. It's very difficult to win against Iowa State. Iowa State and Iowa has one thing in common other than having Iowa in their name. Uh, one week they play great, the next week, mm, we saw upstate, uh, upsets come from both teams, especially Iowa State of recent. Iowa beat the piss out of Oklahoma, either last year or year before that. But I believe you lose to Iowa State. You're now three and four. I just don't think you have the players to pull that together. After that, you're at Kansas State. Or at Kansas, not Kansas State. At Kansas, you got Les Miles and his team. Uh, you know, Oles did some winning at LSU. Also, Les wasted a lot of talent at LSU. And if he wasted a lot of talent at LSU, it's very difficult to resurrect a team that has mounds and mounds of dirt on it like Kansas. You beat Kansas. You're now 4-4. Four four. Take a week off. You're going to need it. And you go to West Virginia. West Virginia. West Virginia, when you think about them, you think about Will Greer, you think about Seals. He, you know, Southern Cal offered him when he was in the womb to come play quarterback for them. But they're no longer there. I have a first-year head coach, and he actually went to, a, I think, a kind of lower level down, but I think he saw the writing on the wall. I believe you're going to beat West Virginia. I believe you're 5-4 and four at this time, if I know my mouth right. Uh, next week, you play TCU. You know, TCU is just such a pisser to try to figure out because TCU looks like they're going to do good, and then... No. Um, I believe I believe they edge you out. I believe they edge you out. I believe they beat you. Very next week after that, you're going to play Kansas State. Kansas State uh, looking to have something to prove. They're, uh, they got a first-year coach. Um, Snyder retired at 173 years of age. Coaching in the NFL. Not in the NFL. Good grief. Coaching in college football since the inception of college football. Um, I believe he beat them. I believe this is a game that your coaching staff can pull it together and say, hey, guys, I know we're not where we're at. We can win this game. I believe you win that game. Last game you play at Texas, it's on a Friday night. You lose that game. They're going to be fired up. Uh, I, I think that they're trying their very, very best Best chance. They're, they're giving their best effort. To try to compete with Oklahoma right now. It's very difficult for them. Though Longhorn fans are telling me you don't know what you're talking about. I, look, I have nothing against Texas. But I think that they're not going to let you sneak up on them. So, I have you losing uh, Texas. Believe we're gonna, uh, lose TCU. Iowa State. Baylor. Did I say Baylor? I said you beat Baylor. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and Arizona. I think that's what I said. You're 6-6. Six and six. It's better than last year. Where do you go from here? Well, let's say the smoke clears. You're sitting 6-6. Six and six. Maybe you win one of those games. I said you didn't. 6-6, six and six, maybe 7-5. and five. Where are you at? Well, you have to step back and say, okay, we did this with a first-year coach. There, that is one of the easiest sales to a recruit. You did it with a first-year coach. But it's very difficult to sell that you did that with a coach who's not only an alumni, but he's one of your passing leaders. And he's been there for a while. 
and there was excitement around him, but he just couldn't deliver, and now he's the head coach in the NFL. I'm not knocking him. I know Texas Tech's a very difficult place to coach. Mike Leach found a way, though. Love him or not, he found a way. Question is, will Wells be the one? Will Wells be the one to do a repeat of Mike Leach or better? We don't know. We'll see at the very end of the season. Hey, thanks so much for joining me. Once again, if you're still wondering why I did this, it was a viewer request. I'm Bobby Durkin. You keep showing up, Lord knows. I'll keep showing out.